Well, hello there, YouTube. Epilides here, long time no see. Um, I'm just going to start this video off with a quick thank you to everyone who's still watching these videos. Um, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, um, and I could never have imagined that the channel would get this successful. Um, I'm just really thankful that you guys are all supporting me. I have almost 35,000 video views, and again, I never thought I would be this successful. I just kind of did this to try and help other people learn to develop. Never thought it would be um, this successful. Uh, having said that, on my last video, which I said I was going to change the format of the channel and just kind of do what you guys wanted, someone asked that I did a tutorial, not a tutorial, but kind of an overview of all the things that you should have as a developer, all the different tools that you need. Um, so I'm going to go with that uh, and quick run over that. Um, so the first thing is if you need to learn how to code, um, in my opinion, books are the best way to do it. You can take notes, you can highlight, you can go back and look at what you missed. Online things don't really work too well. They're just not really user-friendly for learning. Um, so I'm going to suggest books, uh, and I have two sets of books that I think really are... Um, the best for this. Um, I'll zoom in here so you can see this a little better. But uh, first of all, my favorite brand is A Press. Um, I've got five of their books, and in my opinion, they're the best and easiest to understand, and they're most the most user friendly, whether you're advanced or beginner. Um, and they've got all sorts of books. You can see they've got absolute beginners to Pro, Beginning iOS 6 Development, Learning C, uh, all the way up to Learning Objective-C, Coco, everything. Uh, they have different sorts of um, guides on how to use different operating systems and apps effectively, different devices, um, and then things like Objective-C design patterns. So a lot of variety. I think they're the best books for learning languages and concepts. Um, and then you have the Pragmatic Bookshelf. By the way, I'll post links to all of these books and applications on the uh, video description. Um, but the Pragmatic Bookshelf produced a book called iOS Recipes, Tips and Tricks for Awesome iPhone and iPad Apps. And this is a book that I always keep with me. Uh, it's a great book. It teaches you a lot of cool things that you really do need to know uh, and really should know. Um, it's something that I really enjoy using. Um, this version is iOS 4 and Xcode 4, but you can also, uh, they also have newer ones that are updated for the la latest versions of the SDK. Um, they all have all sorts, they have all sorts of different books. Um, look through them. These are my favorite. I love the guys who write the books. I love the books. They're all really useful. They've taught me a lot of really cool things. They teach you essentially problem solving in your apps and how to go about achieving different cool features that no one really tells you how to build. Um, so that's kind of it for um, for books, um, or at least that's what I'd go with. Um, and so that's that. Um, the next thing that we're going to cover is different apps that you should have. Um, the first one, obviously, is Xcode. Uh, you can see I have the developer preview because I already have OS X Mavericks installed, but I'll go out, uh, open up the old one. Um, so you can see there's my organizer, but basically Xcode is obviously the bread and butter of developing for iPhone or the Mac. Um, and that's about it. That's the only thing you can use to upload to the App Store, which is kind of the big one. Um, but it's also the only one that you can use to support and debug your iPhone or Mac or anything like that. So this is kind of the way that I've thought about it. If you don't have Xcode, you're not a developer for the Mac or for iOS. Um, the next thing is, if you're learning other languages, you either need NetBeans or Eclipse. Um, oh, NetBeans isn't liking me, it might be because I have... Uh, NetBeans or Eclipse are both not opening. I need to install a later version of Java. I don't have that runs I've installed. Um, in any event, those are big ones. Um, and again, I'll post the names and links to all of these on the video description. The next is an app called Doxygen. Um, uh, Alfred hasn't been liking me since I installed the beta software. All right, the next one is one called Doxygen, which is up here. And Doxygen is essentially an app 
that you can use to document your code in Xcode. Xcode doesn't natively support code documentation uh, like Java IDEs do. Um, so what you need to do is you go through this wizard and it'll tell you how to generate your documentation. It'll spit it out in an HTML that you can then open up in your browser. Um, or upload to a website or whatever you want. Um, so Doxygen is something very useful. Uh, Apple actually provides documentation on how to use it to document your projects. Uh, so, you, so I'll post a link to that documentation as well. Um, the next app is something called Live Design. Uh, and Live Design is a very cool app. Um, what Live Design does is essentially, I don't know why that's up there. Um, Essentially what Live Design can do is if you're using Photoshop, what you can do is design graphics and then um, if you have Live Design open and the Live Design app on your iPhone, what you can do is you can uh, create graphics on Photoshop and as you edit them in Photoshop, it'll update live on your phone or on your iDevice, um, which is really helpful for seeing how things are going to look on the actual device because the displays are different. Um, there's different types of displays. so. Uh, I found this to be a very useful app when building graphics, obviously a photo editor, um, or some sort of vector graphics editor. Um, the two that I use are either Pixelmator, which is $29.99 on the App Store, um, or the other one is Acorn, uh, which is one I just got a couple of days ago, and that's $49.99 in the App Store, but I like, uh, I like uh, Acorn more, actually. Um, Personally, at least for me, Acorn is a little more, a little cleaner and easier to use, but it's also got a lot more advanced features like layer styles, which uh, Pixelmator doesn't have. Um, but essentially, the bottom line is you need some sort of vector graphics editor that you can use to create your graphics and keep them updated as display resolutions change. Uh, if you're using bitmap um, graphics that aren't rasterized vector layers, then you're going to have a really tough time keeping your graphics updated as new displays come out. Um, the next one is something called Tiled, which went right there. Um, and Tiled is an app that, sorry, I had to approve something on my other screen. Um, tiled is an app that if you create shapes or draw in a small image, what it'll do is it'll, is it'll tile it and generate a background image for you that you can put as a background image in your app or your game. Um, and then you drag it into Xcode and put it into Interface Builder. Um, I'm not going to really demo it right now, I can do that in another video, uh, but basically this is something that, again, I use a lot, and it's something that is really a go-to tool for anyone who does their own graphics and doesn't hire someone else to do their graphics. The next is an app called Status Bard, um, and this is essentially an app where, let's say you take a screenshot in the iOS simulator or from your iDevice, um, you drop a screenshot there and it'll crop off your status bar uh, for if you don't want people to see your network or what time you were working at or if your iPhone is really jailbroken or anything like that. Um, it's an app that's very useful and something that you should use before uploading screenshots to the App Store, things like that. Um, App Store is kind of a, or the status bar is kind of a big one that I've been using a lot. Uh, two more. Uh, the next one is called Prepo. P-R-E-P-O on the App Store. Just quit itself probably again because I'm running 10.9. I'm sure they'll submit. Oh, no, it's because they have to authorize it. I just got a new MacBook, so I'm having to authorize a lot of stuff. Let's see if it'll work now. There we go. All right, so Prepo is essentially it. you drag in a 1024 by 1024 piece of artwork for your app, and it'll create all of the icons and App Store icons that you need in order to upload your app and then put your images into your package so that your app can have an icon on the home screen and things like that. Uh, you just drag in your artwork 1024 by 1024 and it creates everything that you need. That's uh, very useful. Prepo Plus allows you to do things like remote live preview where you can um, create an icon on here and then as long as your iDevice is connected it'll show it on there so you can see what it's going to look like on the home screen. Um, so very cool, again, something that I use anytime I'm generating artwork. It's very good, very useful. And the last one is an app called Key Codes. Um, I don't know where Key Codes went. There we go. I'm going to have to authorize this one too, I bet. If you hold on a minute. Oh, no, that one just opened. All right, so Key Codes is... Uh, 
Um, essentially what it does is if you type, it'll give you the key code. So let's say you're setting key value equivalents or shortcuts, or you have a custom keyboard that you're using, whatever the case may be. Um, say I do command C, it'll tell you what keys you pressed, Unicode, um, modifier keys, and it'll tell you how to, essentially how to enter that into your um, code. Um, so let's say we do D or F or command option F or command option V, uh, whatever it may be, it's going to tell you what your Unicode characters are so you can, and what character is produced by that key combination. So you can see command option V um, is that check mark. Um, so you can I make that bigger? Nope, can't, darn. Um, essentially, it'll tell you It'll essentially tell you the key codes. It's very useful. Um, something that I don't use a ton, but something that's still useful when you need it. You know, the one instance when you need it, it's something very useful to have. Um, I'm going to look through these other apps and see if there's anything useful for development. Um, Reflection is an app, very good. Not available on the App Store, available from the website. I'll post the link to that website. Uh, Ten bucks, but it's what you use to airplay your device's screen to your computer screen. Um, so that if you want to demo an app or you want to, yeah, that's really it. If you want to demo an app or whatever, uh, that's how you get your device's screen onto the computer screen. Very useful, um, worth the 10 bucks, support the developer, spend the money. Um, obviously, if you're using source control, you want some sort of GitHub or whatever source control client you're using, some sort of support. I use either Gitpilot or SourceTree, kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Um, DMG Maker is obviously just for making disk images, something if you're distributing the software yourself instead of using the App Store. Um, if you're localizing your apps, App Language Chooser is another good one, uh, free on the App Store. Um, essentially lets you, if you drag your app in, it'll launch it in whatever language you tell it to so that you can test to make sure your localization's worked out right. Um, that's for Mac apps on the iOS. You can just change the device's language and it'll do it all for you. Um, those are the big ones. Um, basically, that was just a tutorial someone asked me to do just to kind of get you guys started, give you guys the basic tools you need. Um, so that's all I've got right now. Um, I'll look through the other comments and see what other people asked me to do, uh, but for now that's all. Uh, thank you guys. Please uh, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep sharing the videos. Uh, thank you very much. See y'all later.